mentioned to you before, those stages of team development Okay, and what that basically means is that the stages are, okay, so they go through, there's five, but I'll only, I'll put four up. They go through a forming stage. So this is any team. What happens in the forming stage? People come together and try and formulate the goals. Exactly. People come together for the first time. Generally, people are pretty what? How would you describe them? Yeah. It's going to happen at the beginning of your season. It's coming up shortly. Open, excited, happy to be there, enthusiastic about what lies ahead. Uh, do they know each other well? They might, but it's going to be a re-getting to know period. Okay, so most times when the team is new, uh, they are fairly adaptive, that is, or fairly adaptable in terms of how they behave. They're literally on their best behaviour. Okay, after they've been together for a while and we've established, okay, in that time period, you should establish... Uh, we have a process for this. It's called goals, roles, interpersonal relationships, and processes. So we have a, a structured way to start the season. If you want information on that, once again, it's on our site. I can send it to you. But that is the way that you structure a season. When teams fail, when teams underperform, almost always one of the, the, either their goal and that then breaks down into their values and associated behaviours and not being well clarified. Uh, team roles have not been decided concisively. Uh, interpersonal relationships are clashing or the team rules have not been well defined. So every study into successful teams, all of them have these four key areas well defined. Okay, so after we go through that forming stage, what happens? We go through a stage where... It's called the storming stage. And what do you think happens during that stage? There's a lot of potential conflict. conflict. How come? Conflict over what? Think about some of the teams that you've been in. What do they conflict over? What sort of stuff? Traditions, roles. Yep, traditions, roles. Maybe you're not happy with the role that you've been given or the role someone else has been given. Maybe you did that last year. And we're not just talking about your technical roles, we're also talking about your non-technical roles. So that is how you're going to make a contribution to the team. You know, maybe you're the encourager. Maybe someone else is doing that. Uh, maybe you're the person who has always had a leadership role in the past and now you're not. You know, so roles always tend to uh, shift around and change and if people aren't happy with the new role that they've been given, uh, it can lead to conflict. And as well as that, there is an expression where we say that people start behaving according to their, you heard this, I mentioned it this morning that with DISC there's already lots of ways that we describe someone's behaviour, wear their heart on their sleeve, keep their, keep their emotions close to their chest or, or they're hidden and we say that in this stage people are starting to show their true colours, are they a true D, as that is, a, a red or blue, a, a yellow or a green, does that make sense? And when, start, when people start to show their true colours what happens? You, yeah, the dynamics, uh, well, at least they start to actually show who they really are and that can create conflict because before that, they're pretty adaptive. You know, they're, they're sort of tiptoeing around each other. They're being polite, they're being well-mannered. So, conflict is actually a really important part of the whole team development process. If you're part of a team and you don't get past this forming stage where everyone's really nice to each other and there's, there's never any conflict and you just think people are getting along well, what do you think? You never actually get there. Okay, because what happens if there's no conflict? What, pe what don't people do? They're not being honest. Number one thing, they are not being honest. Okay, they're not being honest about in the gym. Mate, I think you can lift more weight than that, but oh, you know, I don't want to upset Anthony. I'll just sort of, you know, say, oh, good job, you're going well, mate. But I, oh, you know, Todd turned up late, but I don't want to say anything to him because it might hurt his feelings, you know? What else might happen? What's another scenario? Yeah, we're supposed to be doing sprints and, you know, half the team's not running through the line, but you know what? I'm not saying anything. 
What do you think? The standards massively start to slide and suddenly, yeah, it's, all, it's just literally all downhill from there. It really is a slippery slope. You know, you want to know that the two key things that define successful teams is they have a stack of trust. And they do these things well, but they have massively high standards, which, which what? Exactly. And that's what happens if you get through the storming stage. You go through what we call norming, where the big difference between this stage and this stage is the team starts self-administering, self-managing, self-leading. It no longer is the coach who has to say, hey, Gary, come on, mate, get up on the line. You know, do your job. You know, you start looking after that yourself. Your team members start holding you to account, but in a really productive, positive way. But if, if, if you don't start trialing that in this stage, if the coach doesn't sort of let go from this, this stage here, and if the coach just stays directive the whole time, the team never learns to do that themselves. And so the possibility of them doing it on the field in a, in a game, well, zero. It doesn't happen. Okay, and uh, once you get through the norming stage, which most teams don't get to, performing, the performing stage. And at that performing stage, obviously, is the stage where the team is really essentially getting close to or has reached its you know, full potential. It's actually going really well. And that may mean it's winning, but it also may not mean it's winning. I mean, at the end of the day, you still have to play football. You still have to know how to play football, don't you? Yep. Oh, yeah, it's basically when, yeah, subheadings would be when people accept their role accept their roles, they subscribe to the team behaviours, okay, they are on board with the team goals, there's a good level of alignment and we're at that stage where we are all on the same page and we are happy with the direction that we're going. Can you, you should create it. You know, if, if it doesn't happen naturally, you, I, my belief is that absolutely you should create it. Yeah, you should create it because if you have, this is where it gets interesting again with the profiles, what happens if you have a group of really relationship orientated players who all want harmony and cohesion and you can actually have too much of that. And so if you have a diverse team, this is a good thing about having your D's and having your C's on your team, is that they're more task orientated and they will absolutely bring an element of that storming. I think you can, and I think if you have a framework, you've got to have a framework, there has to be consequences, there have to be behaviours which are well spelled out that you need to see them doing, and ones that you don't want to see them doing. What's the time frame between in, in a week, do you think? Well, it depends how you're going to actually negotiate your way through it. If you don't do anything at all, all you go out and do is play footy, well, probably not, you know. And so, between going from here to here to here as fast as possible, from my, um, in, you know, in my belief, it's all about experiencing each other in as many different ways as possible, different situations, different environments, and that's what true team development activity should do, you know, to expose different aspects of that individual's personality, and then debriefing it properly, you know, and sharing those experiences together. And... And it will only happen if you've done this, or at least something like this. If you don't do that, then you basically won't get there at all.